What's going on, guys? Welcome to the newest episode of Fandom Unchained. Today, guys, we're going to continue our world into the ancient times of Westeros. We are going to continue with House of the Dragon, episode number two. Without further ado, guys, let's strap right in and get into this episode. It was We start this freaking episode with some crazy shit going on. We get to see all these crabs crawling up on to the beach in this area where men are freaking nailed to posts in the middle of the fucking sand and crabs are eating them, guys. They are literally being eaten alive and it's fucking crazy. Then we flash to Corvus Valerian telling the council that he is getting fucked up. One of his ships were taken down and the the council's like, you know what, bro, we'll, we'll pay for the fucking ship and we'll compensate the families. But you know what? <laughs> That's what happens. We don't need to start a war with the free cities. He's like, but we need to defend my shit. We also get to find out that Daemon Targaryen is held up on Dragonstone with Masaria, who he intends to marry. And yes, uh, he's there with his gold cloaks who have sworn loyalty to him, not the king. Um, Yeah. So Allison and the king are spending time together once again, and she and him are going over his model that he has had built by the stonemasons, and he just goes over the scale, and it is of old Valeria. He's Allison and the king go back to having another nice time together, and she is being taught all about old Valeria, and that's what the model is of that's in his room. Then we get to see Allison and Rhaenyra have a nice moment together when they go to the Sept and Rhaenyra is told by Allison, hey, like Allison says, you know what, like I come here and I light a candle and I pray in front of the seven to my mother and I know that I hear her, it's weird, but you should try it out. Rhaenyra tries it and just starts crying and her friend is there to comfort her. So Corvus and his wife, the queen that never was, they actually meet with the king privately and explain, hey, we need to keep our family line strong. You are going to have to remarry and find someone else. So why not take my daughter? So Corvus Valerian's offering up his child daughter. Yes, uh, she's young, 10 or 12, real young, in a private meeting in his quarters while maggots are put all over the king's rotting flesh from his cut from the Iron Throne. There is a story about how the Iron Throne actually does not let anyone that's not worthy of sitting on it sit on it, and they get attacked, essentially. And, yeah, I think that's what's happening here. At this point, when maggots are chewing the rotting dead flesh from the king's fingers, the king is talking to his council members, and Otto, specifically Otto, is saying... You know what? You should really look into remarrying. And he is then told by the king that Corvus has offered his young daughter. And Otto, you can see, is pissed. Then we get to see the king actually take this awkward ass stroll with this young girl through the gardens. And I, the whole time, I'm like, don't do this. Nope. Say no. Say, she's a little kid. And then she like rehearses this whole thing her daddy told her to say about she will give him children and sons. And I'm like, this just got weird. Rainey's begins to talk to Rainier and explain to her that they will never let you sit the throne. It explains her whole thing and how the council came together and chose not to give her the throne, even though she was the rightful heir. And this is something that's going to hit hard and true for Rainier because that's the same kind of shit that's going to go down with her. So Allison and the king once again meet and she has given him a gift. She fixed the piece that he had broken earlier when they spoke around his Valerian statue. And you know what, guys, their connection is actually just something that I'm really picking up on. Obviously, the king's a horny old man. Allison is not really super excited about being there, but she's also a nice person. But you could totally see that when she is told about his like 12 year old potential child bride, she kind of gets uneasy and then the king sees it. And I know he wants to ask her what she thinks at that point. And I, I think he's kind of itching for it. Then we find out that Damien Targaryen has left a note. His ass leaves a note saying that him... Damon Targaryen has gone to Dragonstone and he will be taking an egg to place 
in the crib of his upcoming to be born child by Lady Masaria. And now that is his horror from the first episode. Now they are to be married and she is pregnant with his up and coming son or daughter. And the whole Targaryen tradition is laying an egg in the cradle with the baby. So they bond from birth. Needless to say, the king is fucking furious and is going to go himself. But Otto decides to go for him, telling him he needs to stay here and stay safe. I'll take care of your brother. The hand then arrives on Dragonstone. We get the fog-covered island. It is fucking ominous and creepy looking. And we get that long entranceway we remember from the Game of Thrones proper. Uh, and it's extra fucking creepy and all that fog. It's really nuts. Otto's walking up the pathway while Damon and his gold cloaks, along with Masaria, are walking down. Damon is holding a dragon egg, the one he has stolen, which happens to be the one that Rhaenyra had picked out for her brother who passed away. A bunch of insults are thrown back and forth. Threats are made, and it looks like blood is about to be shed. And then we see Caraxes, the motherfucking blood worm, crawl over the mountain of Dragonstone and the hand basically begins to shit his chonies because that's a big fucking dragon and it's sexy and red and the blood splatter it leaves is not gonna matter to it it's gonna blend but then as all looks lost we hear Cyrax and Cyrax flies through the air with young Rhaenyra on her back and lands Rhaenyra is there handle shit walks up to Otto and he says you can't do this boom 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 shut up bitch I'm gonna go handle this without any bloodshed she walks over to Damon say bitch you're in my house the king gave me this house I'm the princess of Dragonstone so yo in my house bitch you follows my rules mommy's rules is how it goes down so basically she walks in, she fucking just flops her thing on there. Just like, yeah, that's right, bitch. I got a bigger dick than you do. He tosses the dragon egg to her. She puts it back in the little cauldron to cook. And she jams the fuck out. Handled business. No bloodshed. Damon goes back and sulks. Otto shits himself again while he cleans up the poop out of his chonies already. Rhaenyra flies off like a queen boss bitch. Then we get to see Damon goes back in and talks to Missaria. She does not feel safe and that everyone could just show up and fuck with them. And he was supposed to protect her. The king sits down with one of his neutral members of his council and says, you know what? Like, hey, I need an honest opinion. I was meeting with Corvus's daughter. And he's like, well, honestly, I mean, just thinking about it, Corvus's daughter would be the best one to tie their families together, increasing the Targaryen and Valerian bloodlines. Yeah, and he also runs the biggest fucking navy in the world, so why not? He's the right choice. But does the king listen? We get to see Rhaenyra and her father have a little heart-to-heart -heart after he lays into her for going to Dragonstone, but she did handle it diplomatically, got it done with no motherfucking death, and that's a good thing. So he can't be too pissed at her, but at the same time, he also does tell her, you are the only heir, you gotta be fucking careful and quit doing stupid shit like that. Then they talk about he is gonna have to remarry, and she's like, you know what, I understand, you're a king, I get it. I'm cool with it, dad, go for it. Then we get a council meeting with everyone else showing up and the king does announce that he will not be marrying Corvus's daughter. He will be marrying young Alicent Hightower. Now, two things happen when this shit goes down. Corvus stands the fuck up and storms out because his little child bride ain't good enough for the king versus pretty ass Alicent. Yeah. And then the second thing that happens is Rhaenyra goes from being excited for her father and then the announcement comes that her best friend is going to marry her fucking dad. She does not take it well, guys. I mean, obviously, she fucking... Eyes shaking and shit, blinking all kinds. I'm like, oh no, she's having a fucking mental snap right now. Is she going to go crazy right now? We had so many good moments. What the fuck? She starts going a little nuts. We get that little Mad Queen glimmer going on. I'm like, oh no. This really fucks her up. 
We know that Corvus was pissed, so what he does is he goes straight home to fucking Driftmark, to his ancestral home, and he says, you know what, motherfucker? Calls Damon Targaryen. Damon Targaryen shows up, and they start talking about the shit that's going down that they need to handle, and Corvus, the sea snake, needs to put his shit on the table, and he needs badass Damon Valerian by his side to show the realm, his brother, and fucking everyone that just because they were born second doesn't mean they're not better than the other brothers so yes second born sons together are going to wreck some shit and we're starting with that crab feeding motherfucker that's going to die next the stepstones baby this is one place i want to go we're going to get some pirate shit i hope we get deep into it for real but all in all this episode was fantastic whether it be the big bombshell, I mean, at least for Rainier, we all saw it coming with the king about to smash a bone boom on fucking Allison Hightower. We got dangerously close to the pedophilia cousin thing with the little girl, and I'm like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. We don't know. She, she little. But Allison, going to be a good mommy, going to be a good wife. Uh, she's very pretty. She's very intelligent. And they already obviously have a great connection together, so... We could see it happen even if we didn't already know it's going to happen. I love the parts with Rhaenyra, especially when she goes and be Miss Queen Boss Bitch and handles some shit. Also in this episode, she does pick Sir Kristen Cole to join the Kingsguard, and that is fantastic as well. Awesome. I was really excited to get to see Caraxes and Cyrax and get a really good shot at him from different angles. I really just love that whole scene of Caraxes crawling his big red ass over the fucking mountain. It was so awesome. I was so excited, guys. I was like, oh my God, it's the blood worm. But yes, I enjoyed every fucking second of this episode. God, this is going to be a, such a fantastic show. I am so excited. We got an amazing intro that's rivaled to the old school Game of Thrones one. I really did enjoy it. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this episode down in the comments down below. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the videos we put out every week. I will see you guys next time right here on Fandom Unchained for more. House of the Dragon. All right, guys, see you next week. Peace out.